Welcome to SelfDiscoveryMedia.com, where we discover the communities that are making a difference in the lives of others. Our self-discovery is something we are all making on our life's journey. Here you will find the people that will be your guidance, that will be your inspiration, that will be there for you in support on your journey of life. Do enjoy. Our next show is... Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Welcome back to another edition of Ignite Your Heart and Soul right here on selfdiscoverymedia.com. I'm your host, Sarah Tro. Troy, you're forgetting my own name today. And my guest is Pragito Dove. Beautiful name there. We're going to be talking today about meditation and uh, affirmation, law of attraction. She's an internationally recognized author, meditation and law and attractive expert. She likes helping people learn through their step into wealth, peace and abundance. In this world of confusion, she says, financial uncertainty and mental pressure, where can we go to remove the internal roadblocks, find peace, start achieving. She leading, she's leading expert in the expressive meditation can help you discover your answer because the answer always lies within folks. It's sometimes we just don't know how to navigate and bring it out. Her methods are allow your listeners to remove their inattentions, to release um, their thoughts and tap into abundance that they've only dreamed of previously and sometimes not even dreamed of. In the world of a constant noise, many need a way to reconnect with themselves, their purpose, and their potential. We're going to be discovering her own methods, her own story, her own struggles. Uh, she lives in Arizona, originally from England. She has a book, um, which I'm trying to find the, the name for, um, but we'll ask all about right now. And uh, uh, oh yeah, nope, 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 can't find the book. So launch time. Lunch uh, time, oh. lunch time enlightenment. Excellent, excellent. So sorry, we, we, that was right down at the bottom there. Um, that's an interesting title. Uh, yes. You only get enlightenment at lunchtime? <laughs> 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 Welcome to the show, love. Thank you so much. Yeah, there's actually a great story behind that. Oh, well, we need to unravel that one for sure. For sure, for yeah. sure. Um, everything is an inside out job, isn't it? You know, you, you talk about the noise and the static and most certainly in this last few years there's been a great deal hurricane of noise and static around and it's very hard to find peace amongst that chaos and we can't find it externally we have to go internally and a lot of people just go say well it's all very well but how and how do I manifest? Do I just order it, manifest it from Amazon? You know, cosmic <laughs> Amazon delivery. Um, I'm meditating and meditating. Has anything happened now? You know, everybody's in that hurry and it's like, take a breath, right? Just take a breath. Yeah. <laughs> That's the place to start. So where do we go from there? Well, I can certainly answer anybody's questions on the how how to find the peace, how to find the inner wisdom, how to, find, how to create abundance in your life, abundance on every level, health and fitness, financial abundance, and uh, abundance in relationships where we're talking about love. Mm. Uh, and I've, how do I know that? How can I guarantee that for people? Because I've done it myself. Mm -hmm. I started off... Uh, in pretty bad shape. I had a very challenging childhood. And what I did to cope was I stuffed down my anger, my fear and my pain and decided to live from the neck up in my head. Yes. <laughs> and so then I, <laughs> uh, I started smoking cigarettes when I was 12 because mm. that further numbed out all the mm. pain. And by the time I was in my teens, then I had a recurring back pain. So it was really taking a toll on my body. And it was when my son was born, that was my big wake up call, my big sort of aha moment, because I realized if I didn't do something to heal myself, mm -hmm. I was gonna transmit all this anger, fear and pain to him. And we'd have another unhappy person on the planet. Right. Mm -hmm. So that was my motivation to be the best mom I could be, my original motivation. Um, and 
that decision led me to India, which is where I discovered all these incredible expressive meditation techniques. And, and I found out why it was I couldn't just sit in silence, mm -hmm. which was which was all I knew meditation was right. at the time. Um, because I, I was full of emotional turmoil. I had so much nonsense going on in my head and my body was Responding full of tension. Like that. Yeah. yeah, my body was just full of tensions. Mm -hmm. So therefore the back pain. And um, the big discovery really was the expressive meditation techniques because they all end with sitting in silence. I mean, that's the ultimate goal to sit in silence but how do we get there? <laughs> uh, the first step is we have to offload all the tensions. And these techniques, for example, there's a laughter meditation, a crying meditation, a gibberish meditation, which is great for expressing anger and frustration. Um, there's dancing meditation, humming meditation, dynamic meditation, and so on. And the point is to express out of the body mind our anger, our frustration, but also our joy mm -hmm. and our laughter, our tears, all, all of it in the context of a meditation technique. And then the second stage is to sit in silence. And it's quite quick and quite profound how you notice uh, that, that you can find that inner silence pretty quickly when you've offloaded a right. bunch of oh, wobbly. Yeah. We had a bit of a, a wobbly there. You've spent yourself. That's the point, right? You've spent yourself. You've spent the emotions. You've got rid of them. They're out there. They're, you've released them. So that yes. meditation now really does become that deep breath where you can just ah, relax now and, and pay attention, you know, to that inside out. Because before when you look in, all you can see is just topsy-turvy. Yeah, exactly. And having spent that now, when you go in, you, you can just almost see an inner child with arms up saying, hug me, love me. Yes. And you can get in there and love and hug yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Because the thing is, the inner peace is always there. Mm. It's always been there and always will be there. As is our inner wisdom mm -hmm. and our joy and love, which is the source. We are the source of, our, of love ourselves. It's, all, it's already in there. That's a good news. And yes. all we have to do is, is express out of ourselves all the tensions mm -hmm. and then... You just drop down inside and it's right there. And you can't get there if there's some angst going on. And, you know, I like the fact that you've got a gibberish meditation. Oh, because, yeah, that's you know, a good one. Sometimes, like the other day, I was I was trying to do something on Zoom. And every time it tried to come out, there's, you know, the, the script wasn't coming out. So I just spent a few minutes kind of you know, letting whatever come out, you know. Blah, blah, blah. And yeah. then it was, ah, okay, now I can articulate. Yes. <laughs> you know? Yeah, exactly so, because the mind just gets all scrambled. It's it's on overload. Yeah. And we have to offload it. You know, this exactly the same as with our computer. Mm -hmm. We have to dump stuff in the trash because we've got the computers can't function properly. It's got too much stuff in it. And it's the same with our minds. So, yeah, exactly. And and there's another step you can take in, in the little demo you just did, <laughs> which is great, <laughs> is you can put a lot of emotion into yeah. it. So you can put anger into yeah. it and express it out and then the key thing is in the second step just sit in silence mm. and you can do it for as short or as long as you like um depending what's in there i find most people when they start it they say oh i don't have anything to express but once they get going <laughs> they can't <Ooh>. stop <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
And the thing about putting the anger behind the gibberish, you're not saying anything that you're going to regret later. Exactly. It's, it's not directed at anyone. You're just offloading the anger. And, yes. and, and very often it, it could be a galactic language that you're speaking that is a form of release. You know, whatever is coming yes. out, it sounds gibberish to you. But, you know, to the universal energy, it knows what it is and, and, and it's releasing it from you. So before you turn around and to someone else, exactly you know just go to your mirror and just blah <laughs> and yes. let it out and even yes. if you get with it it's okay <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. It, 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 it totally is because see the the and this is something that that was difficult for me to accept and it's difficult for sometimes for people to accept is it's our anger yeah that although the other person triggered it yeah the fact remains, it's our anger, and that's the huge advantage of using gibberish over using words, mm -hmm. because then we don't personalize it on this particular person, but it's easier to take ownership of it when we speak in gibberish. That uh, I'm talking I mean, about our even, anger, even if when if the person's not there, you know, oh, if, yeah. if you're using that person's name. And that, you know, uh, that vibration is still going out to that person. Yes, so exactly. If, if it is all right, you know, you may have that image in your head, but it just the gibberish just neutralizes it because our reaction, it feels like a personal attack on us. And that's why we're angry. The right. person who did it to us is going through their own particular dump of stuff. Right. And they've just right. dumped it on you instead of gibberishing it <laughs> exactly you've just exactly. become the garbage can you know right so don't accept it don't take it personally release without any names yeah. and then the cool thing is after the sitting in silence and you come back to center you get your sense of humor back yeah and you get you get your creativity back yes and then you can look at that person with more objectivity mm -hmm. and more compassion and compassion yes and solutions will come mm -hmm. and then you can approach them with a calm neutral energy and say whatever you need to say to them and what you'll find is that the other person will come into calm too because when you start with calm energy the other person will respond with calm energy well this is why we say walk away you know, when somebody's got your goat and you can feel your back going up and you want to go into them, yeah. walk away. Yes. Walk away. You know, this is the time. Go mutter to yourself. Go gibber somewhere else. You yes. know, uh, punch a, a bag or, you know, air fists, whatever it is. Get rid of that emotion. Take that deep breath. Send to yourself. Go into that silence and then come back and ask why they feel that way. Yeah. Yeah, and now it's you're in our, dialogue. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that this is how we heal ourselves mm -hmm. because this is old wounds getting triggered. Yes. Maybe the person reminds you of your mother or your father yeah. or, or whoever it is. And we're, we're healing ourselves. And then we can bring that calm, relaxed, uh, compassionate energy to the other person. And it's a win win all around when we take the time to do that. I mean, sometimes that other person doesn't even know what they've said and they're actually maybe just being kind of used as a as a vehicle yes. to trigger you to realize that that issue still lies within you. Yes. And and we just need to, we need you to realize it's still within you and you need to deal with it. And yes. so that person unknowingly has gone and said something and doesn't know what your reaction is all about, <laughs> right? Because right. they triggered something that they had no intention of doing. Uh, and it's like, oh, okay, all right, then, well, that issue is still with me. Uh, yes. I need to deal with it. <laughs> yes, and, and then when we realize that we still have that issue and that person triggered it, we, we can uh, experience gratitude to yes. them for showing us, oh, you still got that issue. Now that can take a lot. I was very resistant to this idea. Yeah. Right? Because I wanted to be the other person's fault. Yes. <laughs> Don't we all? But, <laughs> but uh, as soon as I decided to take responsibility and look at it from that perspective, oh, this is interesting. I still have a wound around that. I still mm. have a reaction. Then the healing can go really fast. 
you know, you, you mentioned love and the love vibration, love frequency. When we're in that frequency, we're, we're in source, in truth. That yes. is the, the, the frequency of not being able to do any harm to anyone else because you can't in that state of beingness. Right. Um, and very often when we're in a relationship, we get mixed up with that love and that love. <laughs> and we forget there's a third love, you love of yes. self and i don't yes. mean narcissism i mean that love of yourself from the inside out because that's your true love that you're now sharing with someone else and that is the love you know the light that you are you don't love someone to expect them to complete you or to to love you to fix you you know right. define you they can complement you we have a complementary love and um, very often we kind of mix kind of chemistry love or the need to be loved and chase the wrong person who can't love us the way we can and then we get frustrated with them where it really is that we need to love ourselves in that light so they know how to love us. Yes, and, and I, I'm really glad you've raised this point because, you know, this all starts in our childhood mm. because as a baby, we what we learn is we need other people. Yeah. We need them to look after us and feed us and all of those things. And then we grow up to be an adult, but we still have that same condition that we need other people. Yeah. I That's how I was raised. I thought I just have to go and get love out there. I yes. had no, no idea I was the source of love yeah. myself. I had to learn that. I learned that through meditation. And as soon as I started to love myself, I learned the difference between loneliness and aloneness. Yes loneliness being the absence of another and aloneness being the presence of oneself it's a great feeling isn't it yes it's a and great that, feeling when you get there <laughs> that made all the difference yeah. so that because love is attracted yeah it's not pursued so then i could attract people who had also found it within them so who were not needy right because before that, it was me and two needy people, right. which, of course, doesn't really work. Nope. Um, Leads to those then, arguments. <laughs> and then I was able to, um, yes, be with people who also understood that they could get love from within themselves. So they weren't needy of me. And everything transformed from there on in terms of the type of people I was attracting. Yeah it's complementary yes you know, and i call it the orchestra you know we're each the instrument uh once we've learned that instrument learned how to play it we we seek an orchestra where we're like harmony you know where we can yes. complement each other and each person has their own instrument to play and it's not one above the other and you know there are the soloists in the world um that's what their path is all about but when you're in that orchestra and you're you're in sync with each other, in harmony with each other, then you know that the music you're going to make is going to transcend so much. Um, that that's a camaraderie, and it's a it's a it's kind of filling up your tank. That when you do go off to be on your own, you never feel alone because yeah. you know always that that is there. Um, it's a great place to be because, as you said, if you're constantly chasing the need to be loved or the need to love someone to define you uh, because you know you're feeling either neglected as a child and it doesn't mean that you had to have gone through abuse you know we look at the generations um i was a very sickly child so i was left alone a great deal um you know i got my meals uh, mum checked in on me but uh, many many hours on my own my mum was literally beaten by her dad from wanting a hug from her mum you know so when, um, we look, when we look at that generation you know as my mum yes. said you've brought your kids up the way you want to be brought up and I'm handsy feely cuggly wuggly right yes so, that's what know. I did I did the same thing <laughs> and so each generation the what you needed as a child you pass on to your child yes right so absolutely when we, when we look at our parents is that they did the best with what they knew yes 
and you course. know an example of the way they were brought up an example of what was expected because society gets in the way all the time with expectations of how you should be right as a mother as a person and as if everything else and if you could take that should and go flick it out um and then just allow yourself to be that's a totally different scenario Oh, yes, absolutely. And I'm, I'm glad you've raised that word should because that's a judgment word. Yeah. And I think that judgment is the number one cause of suffering in the world. Mm, yeah. And, and the people, the person we judge the, the most is ourselves. Mm -hmm. <laughs> From being judged, you know, as a child or at school or something, and then we continue it in our own mm. head. And so that takes a lot of awareness and meditation again, helped me with that a lot to learn to notice the judgments and, and just let them pass by. Somebody else's expectation, not mine. Yes. All right. And this is the thing. It's some, the more and more you look at society and the more and more that it demands from people, the more and more you realize what an illusion it is, that how far reaching it is in, in taking people away from themselves. Yes. It is society and that should and that that judgment is all on a cloud something. I'm not quite sure what, but nobody can live up to that expectation. And if they did get up there, then it's immediately let's pull them back down. They've got too high you know, too yes. full of themselves. And so there it, you will, that was the biggest lesson, I think, for me, when I realized that it didn't matter what I did, who I was, I was not going to please everyone. Yes, yes. I realized that when I was a teenager. Right. I realized I'm never going to please my mother. <laughs> I'm never going to get it right for nope. a lot of these people. So, but I can please myself. Exactly. No. Be true to you. Yes. And that, and that you are enough. You are worthy of you. Yes. You are worthy of love and life and exuberance and joy and abundance. You are worthy of that. Even if somebody else's expectation of you, uh, you didn't live up to it and now they've put you down. Uh, that's their issue. Exactly. Well, well, yeah, it says everything about them. When people yes. judge and criticize, it says everything about them and nothing about you. Right. Right. It's that coming are... from their own lack. Exactly, in their own unconsciousness, yeah. that they're not aware, you know, judgment lives in the mind as does comparison, as does fear, as does greed. And competitiveness. <laughs> yes, exactly. And the more awareness you have of your mind and what's going on, then you are less at the effect of it. Yeah. And more in mastery of yourself. You know, uh Manifestation has also taken on a uh, <laughs> another illusion in many ways because most people think, well, I, you know, I want to manifest a Maserati. Uh, you know, the Amazon delivery will come, you know, the cosmic Amazon delivery. And hang, hang on, I manifest it. Why hasn't it come already? <laughs> you know, and it's, yeah. it, it doesn't work like that. Manifestation is not an order. <laughs> right? So let us actually explain to people what truly manifestation in its truth really is well i have a three-step formula for um attraction and the first step is be clear on what you want yep so because if if you're all muddled and confused or asking for too many things then the universe can't really hear you mm -hmm. so first step be clear on what you want and the second step is put it out there ask it's okay to ask. Mm -hmm. It's just don't ask in a needy way where you're kind of like, oh God, this has to happen. And <laughs> yes. as you were saying, where's my Maserati? This isn't working. I want it now. <laughs> you have to. Excuse me. <laughs> if you, you have to <laughs> ask and let it go. Yes. And you also have to ask not in a, in a, material way but how this is one thing I've, I've learned I want to feel like this yeah. then let the universe bring to you what will make you feel like this not I want to have this I want to be in this position I want to be that I want to be that because that may be not what is good for you but if it's like I want to feel 
this secure or that abundant or ability to do this. I want to be able to feel I can do that. Uh, that's in the best interest of me because when it's in the best interest of you, it's then going to be in the best interest of people around you. I think that the universe can deliver far more that than you dictating what you think you want. Well, yeah, and it depends if you're coming from the head or if you're coming from yeah. a deeper place. Yeah. And the, the, the law of attraction is the one trick book a one trick pony, all it does is match. Yes. And what it matches is your vibration. Mm -hmm. So what I teach my students is like, look at it from like on a scale of one to 10, one being the most negative vibe that you're putting out and 10 being the most positive and start to notice, start to become aware of if, if you are putting out negative vibe and you're down in fear and lack and scarcity down at one, two, three or something, that's what you're going to get back. Yeah. But if you can get yourself up to an eight, nine, 10 and stay up there and gratitude is a great practice for that love, of course, and laughter. I highly recommend to people the laughter meditation because that really can help to kickstart you back up to an eight, nine, 10, if you're lower down and then you get back what you're vibrating. Yeah. So because the universe doesn't care who we are, right. if we're some Hollywood celebrity or a rickshaw driver in Calcutta, the universe, right. all it's doing is matching your energy. Yes. And the feeling state, which you mentioned, is the most important. Yes, our thoughts are, remote, are important, but the feeling state in the subconscious, that's like 95% of us. Yeah. So the more aware you become of your feeling state and what you're transmitting, then the more likely you are and the sooner you are going to get what you want if, as you said, it's for the greatest good of all concerned. Yeah. Then you will, you will get it sooner or later mm -hmm. and that you can, you can work with that. But I find that the step three which is about receiving, allowing is the most difficult for people. Yes. Because, because most people, especially women, are not taught about receiving. Mm -hmm. We're taught to give, always yeah. giving, giving, giving. And what happens then is that builds resentment mm -hmm. down in the subconscious. So then we're sort of sabotaging ourselves with over giving. Yes. And uh, resentment, learn, <laughs> exhaustion, <right>. depletion. <laughs> right. Yeah. So we have to learn to receive and practice receiving. I receive, highly recommend receiving that. without responding. That was one. You know, like somebody yes. pays you a compliment. You know, the, our first reaction is to distrust it. What do they want? Or, or just say, "Oh, right back at you. Thank you." You know, you do yeah. instead of just. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, exactly. <laughs> That's a hard it's, one. That took me a while. <laughs> yeah, it took me a while. I mean, I, I was getting all kinds of messages, learn to receive, yeah. you know. Um, and at first I, I didn't really understand it, but then I started to practice it, like you said, and if someone offers to buy you a coffee or buy you lunch, say thank you very much yeah. and receive it, accept it. And there's all kinds of little ways in life that you can practice receiving mm -hmm. so that you, you start to open yourself up to being able to receive these big things that you want, like the Maserati car. Mm -hmm. You know, I have a great story. This was a long time ago. And a friend of mine gave me an Audi. It was a brand new Audi. Very nice. Yes. <laughs> uh, but I couldn't receive it. And what I, right. what I did was I created a car crash and the car was totaled. Oh, yes, yeah, I was no. fine. I was fine, <laughs> but the car was totaled. And that was a big lesson for me. And I thought, wow, because I couldn't believe somebody would just give me a car yeah. like that. I can receive a car now. Yes. Please <laughs> note, audience. Yes, thank you. You know, just in case. Um, 
Yeah, so that was that was a really big lesson. And so I found the easiest way is to practice in these small little ways, mm -hmm. like buying me lunch or just smiling back at somebody. Yeah. yeah. You know, just simple things. And the other part of the receiving is the allowing. Yeah. So we ask and then we have to allow the universe because yeah. There's other people involved and other scenarios involved in what we want. Yes. So it's not just me, me, me. I want all these things. Right. Um, and nothing wrong with wanting things, nothing wrong with asking. Then we have to allow the universe to, because the universe has the big picture. We don't. Right. Uh, and stay in a state of gratitude. Right. And one thing I find that helps is, talk about as if you already have it yes yes you know that car for example mm -hmm. um, yeah and um, i am um, i'm constantly creating movies i mean this came from when i was a child of six so i'd be constantly in another dimensional movie or whatever and and so for me it's like how i live in that movie of what i want around me um that is always what i'm putting out to the universe now, as yet, it hasn't given me because it wants me at where I am right now. And I understand why. Um, I'm hoping that will change for me next year <laughs> because, again, I'm in service. <laughs> so I'd like, yes. I would like to have a little service over here. But, uh, the universe, I'm in your hands. You've seen my picture. You know how I feel. You know how I feel in this, in this scenario. And you sometimes, along with the allow, is the big P word, patience. Yes. Yes. Don't dictate. Don't demand. Keep the vision. Keep the picture of how you want to feel. Right. Because you've got to put the feeling in there because that's the vibration that you're talking about. Yes. And then allow the universe to bring to you what you need that will fulfill that need that's within you. Absolutely. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. Now, it took me Yep. Sorry, it took, it, took me a while. it took me a while to get my house, which I've been asking for, but I got my house. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping, I'm hoping 2022, I'm hoping whatever which way, universe, I'm being patient. <laughs> I've just got a new grandchild this week. I want a uh, home where I can, they can all come. My dream is the home where the whole family can come, there's space for everybody. So, um, and, you know, it's, it's trust again too, right? And it's also going back to, I am worthy. Yes, that's really at the root of, mm. of so many things. And, and something else I found is that, because I'm also a hypnotherapist. Mm. And so I've, I've had a lot of personal glass ceilings. I've had to br break through because of the way I was raised in, um, very much fear like and scarcity thinking. Mm -hmm. So I've had to change that. First of yeah. all, understand it was there yeah. and understand what I learned and then do the healing work to break open those glass ceilings so that I could keep raising my vibration and therefore raising the level of clients, income, yeah. service that I can be to the planet because I have a very big vision. So, right. and, yeah. and perfectly right to have that big vision. Yes, right, and and to also under to understand that if it's not there right now, if the universe knows that you need this person and that person and this scenario and yes. this time and that and that again, it's that synchronicity of coming together. And when you put your lock your fingers together and pull, it's solid. You can't pull apart. So it, it's not just the one finger that can easily snap off it's bringing yes. you the whole which makes it strong and sturdy and that's where the patience and persistence comes in you know the the vision um and as you said you finally got your house and said mine you know that yeah. the, it's, 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 it's coming it's coming I mean, it is in whichever way i need what needs to happen for it to happen it, it yes. will happen right and you have to just keep believing that and keep feeling worthy but you know talking about the manifestation I think is understanding what is your enrichment. Now, I consider myself incredibly enriched and very abundant with who I am, what I'm doing, with the people I associate with, like yourself, my family. 
I feel extremely blessed. The only thing I need to match that beautiful vibration is the material around me just to fortify the human self because the spiritual self is very, very happy. Um, that when you're putting out that vision is really ask yourself, what is enrichment to you? What are riches to you? Because I've interviewed so many people who've chased after the big home, the big car, the this, the that, and they're working 18 hours a day to maintain it, lose the family, lose the car, lose the house, never have time for it anyway, because they're chasing after the wrong enrichment instead of the internal enrichment of, of love and of service. So yes. when you're going to manifest, you know, really ask yourself, do you really need that? Is that just one of those illusions that you're chasing after? that society is dictated on or is this something that's really going to enrich you in being yeah. a beautiful abundant you and through through that enrich others yes that's what it's about isn't it so it's the highest good of yeah. everybody concerned yes 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 yeah, we're, absolutely. we're in service of each other we're, we're bringing to yeah. the table an ingredient for all to share yes Exactly. You know, and, and sometimes somebody comes to the table and they're rather depleted. And so it's up to us to feed and nurture them so that they in turn can be a contributor because that is what it's about living as a human life here is being a contributor to one another. Yes. Yes. And, you know, as we we're talking about all those needy people mm -hmm. earlier, and that is, you know, at the root of, I think so many problems in the world and yes. the suffering mm. is because everybody's trying to get something. Yes. Not be and, something. <laughs> yeah. Instead of being and being able to receive and then have that balance of giving and receiving, which is the most optimal way to be. And as you say, we, we all share everybody's got something very unique to share mm -hmm. and then we can all share our gifts Yes. And live abundant lives. I mean, I see that as totally possible. Absolutely. And I think the shift is definitely happening. Oh, it is. We, we yes. had to have the Haglas, Celtic Rune Haglas. We had to have that in the last five years just yes. to show how far off kilter we had gone. Yes. How far into the twilight zone we had gone. Mm -hmm. And a saying that was given to me by the universe, the universe is going to shake us up, to wake us up, for us to stand up, change it up and grow up. Yeah, and grow up. And I the think. grow up is a the double taking, <laughs> taking responsibility. Yes. 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 Like things like, yes, you have to get up, turn the TV off, put your drink down yeah. and start participating in life. Yeah. You know, in your community in voting, yeah. in sharing yourself, however that is, tapping into your passions and your skills and your gifts and really being a part of life. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I, I can't remember what the quote is, but someone said about democracy, we have to work for democracy. It's not just given. No. And and look what happened when everybody was like asleep, you know, mm -hmm. so we oh, really oh, it's their responsibility, not mine. Yes, right? exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And it has to be the individual. Yes. It, each, we've all got to participate. Yeah. Each one of us individually. Yes. Is what's going to transform the planet one person at a time. Literally. Um, and yeah. you know, like one show at a time with people who have yes. who walked their path. I mean, this is your the greatest teachers are those that have gone through the lesson themselves. Yes, right? you know, you're not talking from a theory. You're right. talking from the experience, and and we yeah. learn so much more from. Now, it doesn't mean people are going to go and paint by numbers exactly how you you've lived it, but the the program that you're offering now to people are the skills and the tools that you've learned and how they apply them and what they mean to them is their own personal journey that exactly. they in turn will pass on to someone else in some other form. And that's, yes. that's the beautiful flow of loving energy, isn't it? It's constantly yes. out there igniting people, enlightening people, which takes me to lunch enlightenment. <laughs> <laughs> Great segue. <laughs> <laughs> all about that i'm very intrigued yeah so that really is a great story so um 
quite a while ago, I was invited to give a lunchtime presentation to um, a, in a in a bookstore in, San, in the financial district of San Francisco. And when I first got the invitation, I was quite skeptical because I thought, I don't know, you know, financial district, business people at lunchtime, yeah. you know. But, and I thought, think this is really critical, is I said yes. Yes. Um, Don't even presume though, or assume. Yes. <laughs> Explore. <laughs> didn't quite see what was going to happen from that, but I said yes to it. So I always encourage people to say yes to new opportunities, mm -hmm. even if you think this, what is this? This isn't yeah. going to be anything. Because it was huge what came out of it. So I did my first uh, presentation and there was about 35, mostly women in their business suits. And the store manager was there and she'd had a, a pain in, in her neck and across her shoulder. And she said, during my presentation, it, it, it went away because she became so relaxed. Mm -hmm. So they were so thrilled with my presentation. They asked me to come back and do a series once a month and they decided to call it Lunchtime Enlightenment. I like that. It's a great title. <laughs> so the business people could get enlightened at lunchtime because that was the only time they had for it. And then the other thing this, this store manager did, she had to go to New York um, to meet with various publishing houses about books and so on. And she, she just talked all about me all over New York. And I got a phone call from Ballantine Books and also from St. Martin's Press saying, are you going to write your own book? Because we've been hearing all these wonderful things. So, of course, I said yes. Of course, <laughs> another opportunity. Yes. The yes. universe has just handed you something. No brainer. <laughs> <laughs> And it was very easy to get an agent because I'd had those phone calls. Mm -hmm. And then I decided to call the book Lunchtime Enlightenment because that's where that's, it came from. Mm -hmm. That's where it all started. So, uh, yeah. And I got a six figure advance. Nice. <laughs> from actually ended up with Penguin uh, mm -hmm. and a six figure advance. So that's all because I said yes to yes, that yes. initial request to go to that um lunchtime give that lunchtime presentation so you just you just never know yeah. now you know you get i get asked to do things a lot of time and if my core does no if my core goes no you definitely not i trust my core that's what it's there yeah. for yeah but if my head goes no my core goes well why not you know then it's like okay you know because I keep saying we're exploratory creatures. We love yes. adventure. We, you know, we live in wonderment. We should. And if it's like, well, you know, I have no idea where this is going to go, but let's explore it and see. Yeah. And, and you don't know what's going to happen until you participate. Yes. And this is how the universe can bring us gifts. Yes. You know, because our small minds just don't have it all figured out. The mind thinks it knows everything, but it doesn't. Absolutely so, not. <laughs> but, but the universe has a big picture. And who knew that I would receive so many blessings and counting from saying yes to that one event. So, I, Well, the, the ripple effect, too. Yeah, you know, here's exactly. the people in their suits all trying to strut their stuff, be more important than the next person, keep up their image. And there you are kind of melting that expectation of themselves, allowing them to kind of have that deep breath, get rid of those tight muscles and just kind of get real with themselves. Yes. So, you know, that trickle down effect of it's um, clearly what you were saying was having an impact that may have just been a catalyst for someone, just that igniter. Exactly. For them to start seeking that other journey and realizing, hang on, is the suit and tie and, you know, Wall Street for me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Know, maybe there's another path. So one doesn't always know when we when we ignite those things in people. We don't know where they're going to go with it. But we've lit a match. And it's and it's just that spark. And if they can just take it or pivot just a little yeah. bit, start looking at themselves from the inside out more and go, I'm living this outside successful expectation, but the inside is dead. 
Yeah, exactly. How do I come back to life? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've, I've heard that so many times from clients and students. And sometimes the more successful people are on the material level, yeah. the more unhappy they are on the inside, the less fulfilled. And so it's really my greatest joy to serve other people in this way. Yes. You know, having traveled the journey myself. Right. Tell me about it. I've been there. Yep, yep. <laughs> been know, there, and done that, and not doing it again. <laughs> right. And I, that's why I can just guarantee anybody who's willing to do the journey that you yeah. will you will get that inner peace. Absolutely. And and the thing is, you know, an awful lot of people that I've interviewed that, that have been up there, um, it took a cosmic two by four to completely flatten them, to lose yes. everything for yes. them to, to restart and go in a totally different direction and realize that's where they were meant to go all the time. They were receiving the signs. They didn't pay attention. Yeah. If you can get to them and sh shift that perspective, the mind perspective to listening to the wonderful intellect from the, you know, the divine, the soul, the heart and the spirit, which has its own brain, its own intellectualism. I call it the knowingness. And if you can channel that knowingness to what you need to know when you need to know it, then you start questioning everything else you're doing and going, you know, am I just living society's expectation? Is there more uh, about me? You know, is there more that I could be doing that is more fulfilling to me and then for to those around me? And if we could get them before the cosmic two by four. Yes. You know, yes. So, so that they're, they're going to be far more productive quicker rather than having to heal from the cosmic two by four before they have the redirection. Exactly. Exactly. Yes, that's a really good point. And um, something I often say to people, you want to keep on doing this or you want yeah. to wait till the universe hits you on the head and, and make it something really bad, yeah. you know, yeah. they'll be in the hospital or whatever. Uh, let's start the changes now, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, it's, if things keep repeating, like I've heard people have, oh, had yeah. I've had cancer several times. Well, you know, we know that cancer is an 80% um, emotional disease. Yeah. And if you keep having it, it means that you're not addressing the root cause. Yeah. Right. You, you're looking at the external side of it rather than the internal of it. If things keep repeating in your life, it's because you haven't dealt with it. Yes, you know, exactly. And, and get in there and have that gibberish talk, get in there and get mad, you know, get in yes. there and release, you know, then, then be silent, be still. There's so much knowledge to be had in silence. Oh yes. I mean, that's the place to be really. Mm for to to um listen to your own inner wisdom the wisdom from the body will tell you yep. the wisdom from your heart will tell you and the wisdom of your soul of course yes. will, will will give you any answers you want as long as you're willing to to listen yeah we really have to learn to listen to ourselves and, and know know what compliments us you know that there's this big word duty when we say we want you to participate and to be a contributor, uh, that life is of service, it's not about duty. Oh, no. <laughs> you know, duty is that expectation that you will do at any sacrifice. It's you know, servitude. It's slavery. You know, when you are in service, you are giving of yourself. Your cup runneth over. You are giving of yourself. And when somebody receives from you, that's the greatest gift you can have back. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because then it's being transmitted. Yeah. The wisdom is being transmitted. I have a fabulous story um, of a, I gave a free um, five day meditation challenge, which started January 1st. And one of the women on there ended up on the Cle Kelly Clarkson show mm -hmm. because of um, something her and her daughter had done to help a homeless man. And uh, so she's on the Kelly Clarkson show and she said some things about compassion that she'd learned from me in that meditation challenge. And she sent me the, the video clip of it and she said, thank you so much. I was able to talk about compassion on the Kelly Clarkson show because of you and what you said. Mm -hmm. 
you know, and it was, I was so filled with joy. Yeah. Because, simple thing, right? A simple yes, thing. Because, yes, because it was getting transmitted. Yes. You know, um, the words of wisdom were being transmitted out on TV and national, right. nationally and so on. And and that's how it works, I found. And, and we don't, name. you know, we, when, when I said my metaphor for the orchestra and each of us being an instrument, we don't know what instrument we are. We, you know, you can teach the entire orchestra no matter what their instrument is, the principles, which is compassion and love and self-love and, and all of those things, you know, the, the yes. motivation to hear the music within you. Um, but somebody is going to, this is my instrument, compassion. I've interviewed people who are on the kindness thing, other people who are on yes. the smile thing, other people who are on that. This is their platform. Yeah, you know, and it, they're going to ignite the kindness in people, ignite the smile in people, share this with people, share that with people. That is their platform. That's their instrument. So just because you are you are teaching, you're teaching how to use that instrument, no matter what the instrument is. And her instrument was compassion. And by speaking of compassion and having compassion for somebody that most people would just turn the other cheek to. Yes. It's, it's lit up in people. Look at what difference compassion can make. And sometimes some people may wake up and go out and feel guilty. Oh, gosh, no, I, I'm one of those people that walk by. Yes. But I'm not going to do it next time. Yes. Because the compassion has been ignited in me. Right? Yes. I, I love that. that. Yeah. I love that. And you know, you've reminded me there's another piece to this story where the homeless man, actually what happened was he found um, this woman's wallet in the dumpster behind a 7-Eleven. And apparently the cash had already been taken out, but there was all her credit cards and all of that. And he put it in his pocket because he thought, well, she will be wondering where all the, where this is. You know, and so he called her to give her back her wallet. And because of that, they sort of adopted him mm -hmm. and they set up a GoFundMe page for him so that he could sort of sleeping in his car, I could sleep, at least get into a hotel room. The last, last I heard he was in a hotel room and get some decent clothes and everything. And I thought, well, that homeless man actually attracted all of that yeah. because of his generosity of heart to think yes. instead of just thinking about himself, he thought about the woman who'd lost her wallet and gave it back to her. And of course she was thrilled because who these days gets their wallet back when you right. lose it, you yeah. know? So it, it was kind of, um, well, it was just a total win-win story. Right. So, but Let's go back. He had the compassion for her to know what it was like to lose the wallet. Yes, there you go. And then yep. that compassion was then matched on thank you. Instead of just thank you, here's a meal or a couple of bucks. What right. can I do for you? Yes. And that's really what it's about, folks. It's us asking, what can we do for each other? Sometimes yes. it just might be a smile, a cup of coffee, a meal. Sometimes it might be literally changing someone's life. The thing is, if we don't ask, if we don't step up, how are we going to know? And that pivoting of one person's life, you know, now in that gratitude that somebody's placed value upon him. Yes. Giving him a chance to, to rise up again in his life, to be counted, uh, to be able to go and do something for himself where it, we know that when you're at the bottom there, it's very, very hard. I've, I've lived out of my car. I know what it's like. Yeah, it's, it's a self-worth. Well, and he was... He, but is yours, you're so bottomed out, you don't know where to go to rise back up again. And it needs that person who, yes. can, who can go, I see you. Let yes. me help you up to this next level Yeah. Right to get you out of there. And then from there, you've got, it's not about, well, what else are you going to do for me? You know, feel sorry for me or this or that. I interview an awful lot of veterans. And these veterans realize that there's so much need of service that needs for the other veterans that the government cannot do. So they set up the foundations themselves. They yeah. step up and help each other because they understand what they need. It's not like, oh, me, I'm suffering from post-traumatic stress. I'm suffering from post-traumatic stress. I know what my brothers and sisters are suffering from. We're going to set up a foundation to help them. And that's compassion. Exactly. That is <laughs> compassion. 
Yes, that is giving with without an expectation of something coming back. Right. Just giving a desire, a desire to help someone else. Yes. As I said, the gift back is when somebody else receives what you've given them and it's made yes. a difference in their lives. That's it's, already a gift back. Yes. It's, I got a gift back from that. Yeah. <laughs> you yes. know? Yes. Uh, and, but and you have that impact and look at the ripple effect. Yes. Yes. And, and it's interesting because um, what, what my client said on the Kelly Clarkson show, she said, this is not charity. This is compassion. Yes. And I love that she said that because it's not like we're looking down on you. Right. Because we're better than you and things like that. It was just, no, this is compassion, highest form of love. And, you know, let's look at 2020. How many people have lost their homes, lost their jobs, lost yes. their loved ones? Yeah. You know, so many people need that compassion right now. They don't need yeah. judgment from you. They don't need any persecution. And, you know, it's it's been a huge wake-up call as to which religions are truly compassionate yes. and which aren't. And if you're not in compassion right now, you're not in, quote, quote, in God's love. Because God is love. Yes. And love is compassion. It is being there for one another. It's not about judgment. You're on the Absolutely. wrong train if you're in judgment. Yeah. Well, judgment's up here. And yeah. compassion Righteousness is the heart. Righteousness and judgment and ego, it's all, you know, and then in the name of a God? No. Sorry. No. <laughs> you're reading no, it's the, the, head, the head and the heart. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and the thing is, the soul always, the universe will always speak to us, but it can't speak to us through a closed heart. Yeah. So, and I know it's, you know, so easy to shut your heart down when you've been injured, when you've been deceived, when you've been betrayed, you've been hurt. But if you don't open that heart up again, you're not going to be able to receive the wisdom that's going to carry you forward. And yeah. it is through pain. You know, my daughter's just given birth last Monday and she had a very difficult, difficult birth and she's still having difficulties now. And he was a much bigger baby than we thought he ah. was going to be. Um, <laughs> And, you know, it's been kind of a, a rough ride for her, but the, the already, the, you know, that love of that child is the one thing that you can go through most excruciating pain of in the world and be yeah. grateful for the gift that you get at the other end of it. Absolutely. And um, my own personal show this week is on that, you know, the, the gift of birth. And I'm not just talking about actually giving birth, though I think if, if everybody if it alternated between men and women having a child, I don't think we would be so eager to send them to war or send them to killing because you yes. know exactly the nine months of carrying them, the giving birth, the raising of them. You don't go and send them out to die. Yes. Right? So, you know, exactly. I think it would be a totally different mindset, but it's also about the rebirth within us. Yes. And, and every yes. single one of us has a rebirth, maybe one or two or three or four times in our life. Oh, at least. Right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And don't be afraid of it because it's through that pain. Yes. You discover what that next chapter is, what that next birth is. Yes. I always like to, to think about um, a little bird in an, in an egg shell, you know? Yeah. And it has to crack. It has to break open yep. for the little bird to be able to fly out. Mm -hmm. And I always see that as, we have to crack open and that's the pain, but it's a good pain yeah. because it's allowing us to expand. It's allowing our creativity to, to be unleashed into whatever expression is going to come. And um, I think pain is, is part of life. It is. And, and it doesn't have to be as painful. <laughs> yes. Because if we're resisting the pain, the pain's going to be more. If we go with yes. the pain as an experience, we'll get through it. We've got to be willing to go through the process. We can't resist the process because then yes. it becomes more painful. Yeah. We make, it, we make it life much worse for ourselves. But when we are willing to face the pain, then we can reach that vibrational level of love where there's no pain and no fear. Right. And that's where we all want to be. When you're in that state of love, fear has no place. Yep. Oil and water. <laughs> it's just, sorry, mate, you're in the wrong area. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, that doesn't mean you don't have sensible caution. 
right? You don't have yes. the inner voice that will guide you saying, you know, you know, it, it's not a question of, I'm in love, I can walk in front of a bus and it won't hit me. No. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Exactly. And, you know, uh, or, you know, being afraid of the virus in a sense of, you know, let's have some sensibility and caution here, common sense about it. Yes, you know, absolutely. Too, too fearful of it because that can invite it. Uh, but the sense of common sense of caution. So it's being in the state of love doesn't mean you're abstaining from responsibilities of being a human being and the necessities of, of survival. It just means that you do it in, the, in a high vibrational state of love uh, yes. and clarity and peace. Yes, and, and also you do it because you cannot not do it when right. you live in that state because yeah. your heart is so overflowing that you have to give the overflow to whoever is willing yeah. to receive it. The cup uh, enough over, it's got to go yes. somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and the more that, you know, the more love that you are and the more that that cup run of over, the more it's going to affect other people around you. They're going to share that frequency, that orchestra, that symphony yes. that's going to resonate out. And you can't help but be ignited by it, by being intoxicated, invited by it. Inspiration begets invitation. When somebody is inspired yes. like that woman was, then she was invited to in to seek, you know, to look at that man not out of pity but with compassion. Yes. Right? And and then you know, look where the story has gone from there. So it's changing that whole perspective of understanding when you're coming from that heart space. It's a totally different understanding. Yes, and it's a total win-win for everybody. It's always a win-win, but especially for you, yeah. because you are experiencing that love in your own heart, in your own body. Yeah. And then it, it just helps your life. It just flow with grace and ease. Yes. So now that leads me to your programs. What kind of programs do you have? And um, can you share all, the, all about that, how people become a part of it? Yes. Well, um, I have meditation trainings. Uh, I have um, two more coming up this year. One's online, and one at the end of October is in person, which I'm very hopeful. <laughs> yes, yes that, that will happen. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I also do hypnotherapy programs for people that want to work with me individually to bust those glass ceilings we talked about and change their money blueprint. Because mm. a lot of us are blueprinted in, in a fear, lack, and scarcity um, conditioning around money and abundance in general. So I, I work with people to, um, first of all, understand those conditionings, and then we, we change them. Yeah. The cool thing is we can change them. That's the, that's, it's all a choice, isn't it? Yes. Got to make exactly. the choice. Yeah. Yes. Now, how and, do people, and, yeah, go ahead. Oh, and invest in yourself huge one yeah huge. that's number one invest yeah. in yourself you can't be anything to anyone else until you are to yourself yes if you exactly. are dysfunctional or at disease you're inviting disease and that dysfunction is being passed on we have a dysfunctional society because we didn't look out after our children growing up um, and that yes. inner child is, you know, what's calling out for that love now. So yes. the more we invest in ourselves and in our inner child, our inner core, the more we're going to be less of a strain on society. Instead, we're going to be the solution. Yes, exactly. I love that. Um, and so where people can find me, I think you were going to ask me that. Yeah. Where is my and website. Your and your book. Oh, yes. And my book, which I've got here. Um, my website is discovermeditation.com. And if you go forward slash contact, you can get my free gift, which is a three-part video series, Abundance Activation. So it's a very powerful kickstart to help you into more abundance. So for those that have listened to the show right to the end, you've got that gift, right? Yeah. So it's uh, discoverymeditation.com forward slash contact. Yeah, not discovery, discover. Discover meditation. Yeah. Well, I'm self-discovery. Yes, I've got discovery <laughs> on my mind, right? Discovermeditation.com forward slash contact, and then they can receive uh, the three-part um, wonderful video 
yes. the decision and gifts. So um, thank you for that. That's uh, going to be a wonderful start for for people who accept that because it's it's always about the first step, isn't it? It's, yeah, it's, it's the first step. Just, toe by toe, it doesn't matter. Just please move forward. Don't stand terrified or stagnant or, you know, disillusioned. Just one foot in front of the other. You can do it. And the more you do it, the more momentum you, you, you get and, and the more skills and tools and more practice. And then suddenly you're so at home with it, it becomes second nature. Yeah, it becomes your new normal, doesn't it? Exactly. It, it yeah. does. How do they get hold I, of the book? Yeah, yeah, so here's the book. The book um, you can find on Amazon. Lunchtime, Lunchtime Enlightenment. Enlightenment. Yes, and this is the second edition, so you want the green cover one. Right. The second right. edition. Excellent. Um, so, yes, I mean, what a wonderful story of that and, and the impact and the, the ripple down. I mean, they talk about when the richer, richer, it will ripple down to the poorer. Well, we know that didn't work. But yes. in the case of wisdom, yeah and love knowledge it most certainly does ripple down oh it absolutely yeah. does it just yeah. rains down on people and then you know they just start feeling those drops of hope and belief that they can and that there is a better world and we can do it they can do it and, and it ignites about yeah. heart and soul right so that's absolutely so thank you so much for sharing with us here today it's been well, a, I've really right enjoyed back. it. It's been a lot of fun talking to you. I'm right back at you, right back at you. It, it's uh, we're not alone, you know. When we to get to the space where you are and I at in that love vibration, um, there's an awful lot of our own sustainability that we have there. Um, it doesn't mean we don't need other people, you know, to to regenerate. But we're we're in that connection with the universe, so that vibration has always been ignited. Um, but also with um, with that state of love, just being who you are, it, it to other people, it's not out of reach. It is an invitation. If you can be in that yeah. state of love, I can be in that. What did you do? And that these were my steps. Apply these steps. Yes. It's your own steps. All I'm doing is just giving you the blueprint and uh, you apply it. Yes. You will see the responses and your journey may be different reaction to yours, but it's still going to be a positive reaction. Right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So thank you for taking your journey. Well, thank you for inviting me. So remember, folks, it's all within us. And uh, even in the lunchtime enlightenment, you know, it's all there. And all we have to do is just be willing to take the journey. And it starts with being aware, being aware of, you know, the, the anger, the pain, the anguish inside of us, of learning to spend it, and then going into those peaceful moments. And when you learn the meditative skills on how to do that, then it just becomes part of your life, part of the daily routine a part of your equilibrium and then you'll really be able to go out there and be all that you're meant to be in contribution to this beautiful planet so until next time bye for now we hope that you enjoyed the show you will hear many many shows here at selfdiscoverymedia.com we have new shows for you out every week just find them on our podcast or, or what's new if you feel that you have something to share that makes a difference in the lives of others, or you too feel that you could be a host, please contact me at info at selfdiscoverymedia.com and we will be glad to speak with you. Have a wonderful day.